The past two days have seen the conclusion of the quarterfinals from a Stage 1 playoffs of the Overwatch League 2019 season, and all four games gave us some great excitement, entertainment, and a major surprise. So let's discuss briefly what went down before I quickly preview the semi final matchups. First, it was kicked off by our first playoff game between the Seoul Dynasty and the New York Excelsior. Just before we started the first map, we learned that Seoul will be running their perceived B team on control, Ilios, and consequently, most analysts felt even more comfortable in their pre-game predictions of an easy Excelsior victory. But it soon became apparent that this unexpected lineup from Seoul had clearly caught New York off guard. The first fight was simple for the dynasty, given their compositional advantage against the Orisa of the Excelsior, but from then on, it appeared as if Seoul were playing New York's passive counter-attacking style, which Mano particularly found very challenging to play aggressively into. To the surprise of many, the Excelsior could not find a single effective response. Before we knew it, the Dynasty had taken the map and led the series 1-0. After this, Seoul subbed back in their normal starting side, but the onslaught continued as they played far more like New York, with great patient teamfighting and ultimate management than the Excelsior themselves, who looked uncoordinated and panicked with their ults. With plenty of time remaining in their push, Michelle hacked Jonak whilst he had trans available, and the dynasty wiped New York to reach her objective on Hollywood to lead the series 2-0 and only need one more map for the upset. With map 3 on Volskaya now a must win for the Excelsior to keep their playoff hopes alive, they came out at a much higher level of performance and sped through the first two points with five minutes remaining on the time bank. But once again Seoul went to their bag of tricks and utilised an effective triple DPS comp with Farah and Somba. They easily snowballed the second point with EMP Barrage as the Dynasty finished the map in a slightly faster time. These great offences traded back and forth again and it wasn't until Seoul, after capturing 5 points, were finally held in overtime on the back of a clutch double kill from Jonak on May. New York had a couple of minutes to capture both point A and B to keep their playoff hopes alive and after heavy investment into the first point, it looked as if the Dynasty would pick up the win with EMP. But after Nene and Jonak massively clutched the map, the Excelsior looked back from the dead with all the momentum with the score now 2-1. Seoul chose Rialto as the next map, and it came down to the sombre goats of the Dynasty against the traditional 3-3 of New York. Seoul managed to scrape through the first two checkpoints with EMP, and it looked like they might just do the same to finish the map before they C9'd, giving the Excelsior their target for victory. The first two checkpoints weren't at all difficult for the Excelsior, leaving them just over 4 minutes to complete the map and take us to game 5. But every time they attacked, Seoul just seemed to utilise their ultimates perfectly to neutralise New York, but also be prepared for the next fight, a marked improvement from their previous series. After an outstanding hold, it came down to the final push, with the Excelsior having 6 ultimates, but running into Michelle's EMP. Then they attempted an extremely high risk grab to kill the Sombra, but this failed, and consequently, Soul behind EMP used their ults to wipe New York and finally complete the massive upset victory against the favourites, perhaps the biggest in Owl so far. After this match was the next series that saw the new tournament favourites Vancouver Titans go against the Boston Uprising. With anticipation building for another potential upset after the previous match. However, all hoping for this soon returned to reality, as to put it briefly, Boston were rolled by the Titans. As I said in my preview, Boston just couldn't seem to handle the ruthless aggression of Vancouver, and even when they did find success, more often than not it was down to the sloppy, over-aggressive bumper feeding than anything else. With a quick 3-0, Vancouver locked their spot into the semi-finals against the Seoul Dynasty, so the uprising bow out after an impressive stage, but will need to show some flexibility given it severely costs them here. Friday's first game saw the Week 1 rematch between the Philadelphia Fusion and the Atlanta Reign, with both sides knowing a win would keep them in the opposite side of the bracket to Vancouver, and with New York eliminated, make their path to the final a lot easier. Most of this series was a back and forth brawl, with both sides on the whole equally matched. The first map Ilios saw Atlanta dominate on their Torb comp, on well, it was after a massive gravity eat by Daco and Ruins that shifted the alt economy in the rain's favour and led to them edging out the first map of the series. 
Continuing into King's Row, Defran was having a good game on Zarya, and Atlanta managed to hold the fusion to before the second checkpoint, as they once again struggled on Ryan Goat. However, Poker particularly had a fantastic series, and buoyed his team forward to a clutch overtime fight win to stall the Reigns' push in overtime and level the series at one apiece. Now heading into Volskaya, a great Philadelphia first attack behind a superb Winston goes, furthered their momentum as Atlanta just seemed to be tilting a little, which has become a bad habit of theirs of late. In reply, they could only manage to cap the first point on their second attack, leaving the fusion with five and a half minutes to capture the first tick on the second point. Carpe surprised everyone and was playing Doomfist, and this perhaps confused Atlanta to such an extent that Neptuno slipped in behind their defense and captured the point and won the map with a rain C9. We headed into Route 66, and Atlanta's playoff quest looked to be crumbling, as they were stalled on the second section of the map. To give them credit, like on King's Row, they managed to take us to overtime, but it seemed that the overall experience and clutch factor of Philly proved too strong for the rain to compete with, as they just managed to complete their objective and win the series 3-1, to crush the playoff aspirations of the many Atlanta fans, even though they can be very proud of their performance here. The Fusion would face off against the winner of this next series that saw the Toronto Defiant take on the San Francisco Shock. The next two teams that behind Vancouver now had the greatest chance of winning in most analysts' eyes. The teams faced off on Busan to begin with, and it became clear that in the straight head-to-head -head matchup of the 3-3 free -free Goats that the Shock had the clear advantage and better quality. To counter this, Envy ran Sombra for the Defiant and found some success leading to one round win, but even this was not enough as San Francisco foreshadowingly went up 1-0 in the series. On King's Row, they really ramped up the domination of Toronto, as Rascal took it upon himself to completely shut down the Sombra on Brigitte, even stunning an EMP at one point. The side powered through the map before impressively full holding the first point to take us convincingly into the half 2-0 up. The Defiant selected Horizon as the map they wished to start their counter-attack on, and found some success by completing the map in just over half the time. But behind Super, who was having an incredible day like most of the shock, Toronto just couldn't seem to handle the relentless and ruthless aggression when San Francisco attacked, as they ploughed through to a two-minute cap. From here, they just couldn't seem to recover, and after being fully held, the Defiant would need an almost six minute hold to keep their playoff dream alive. But the Shock, who have been pressed throughout stage one, once more highlighted their quality as they comfortably took the map and confirmed the 3 0 sweep as they head to the semi finals. Aside from the sole upset, I got the rest of my predictions for the quarter finals correct, but let's see what awaits us in the semi finals. In the first game on Saturday, the Vancouver Titans now face the Seoul Dynasty what should be a mouth-watering series as the Apex Season 2 finalists clash in this fated rematch. Vancouver will be expected to win as heavy favourites, but Seoul will have put doubts in everyone's minds after their huge upset over New York. We already know that the Tysons will look to blitz for Dynasty as usual, but who knows in this first to four series what Seoul's game plan will be given they have shown us that they can play in aggressive goats, counter-attacking goats, sombra goats, the whole other lineup at their disposal. Furthermore, the main reason I had predicted a New York victory over Vancouver was because I thought their counter-attacking style had the advantage, just adding another layer to what I hope will be a great contest. I still think Vancouver will win, but I expect it to be really close, perhaps a full set where the dynasty potentially could also sneak a second consecutive upset victory. The other semi-final pits the Philadelphia Fusion as big underdogs to the impressive San Francisco Shock on the other side of the bracket. Whilst Philly will love this underdog status has become a major personality of all its city's teams, I'm not too sure they will be able to overcome a hurdle this high, especially with their current level of Rheingoats. They did show some sparks of their potential quality if they can play Winston Goats, and Boombox had a nice game overall against Atlanta but San Francisco have been ploughing through all their opponents of late and look, like Vancouver, to be by far and away the best team remaining. So I think they won't have too much trouble picking up the win here, 
that would set us up for a great rematch in the final, so San Francisco Shock would face the Vancouver Titans for the Stage 1 crown. With that, I've reached the end of my quarter final review and semi final preview, and I'd love to hear what you think is going to happen in these matches. Otherwise, if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe as I return tomorrow with my semi final review and larger preview of the Stage 1 final.